What is up, everybody? Oh, man. Thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. We're super, super pumped to be here. Um, we spent a lot of time working on this talk, so we just appreciate um, such an awesome group of people coming out to hear us speak tonight. Um, as Taylor hit on a little bit ago, um, we're going to be talking about building relationships tonight um, in the context of friendship, intimate relationships, and then also like in this community sense as a whole. But before we dive in, uh, we thought it'd be important for us to just introduce ourselves a little bit so y'all can get to know uh, me and Sarah. Uh, so this is my friend, Sarah Lay. Uh, she is a senior from St. Charles, Missouri, uh, majoring in mechanical engineering. And uh, starting in the fall, working for Burns and McDonald um, in their energy department. So this is my friend Caius, he's a senior studying psychology and he's from Lebanon, Lebanon Missouri, but just moved to Washington, Missouri. Um, he's just got accepted into the social work program at WashU and will be working at the Pines Camp this summer in Texas. Um, so a little bit about how uh, me and Sarah are up here tonight um, in our friendship. So uh, I met Sarah sophomore year. Um, at and woof. Um, I thought she was a really, really cool girl. Um, and anyways, a little while later on, um, she decided to ask me to go to Kite and Key Formal with her, um, or to Kite and Key Social, um, which is like a Kappa Alpha Theta event that used to happen every year. It doesn't happen anymore, but that's another story. Um, anyways, um, so her inviting me to that was super awesome. We had a great time. And uh, to be completely honest, I kind of thought it was going to be like the spark of a little something more. So I thought there was some potential there. Um, I was super pumped. So my first interaction with Caius was after one E3, he walked up to me, looked me up and down and goes, dang, your outfit looks fire. <laughs> so in the back of my head, I was like, oh, maybe Afro Man thinks that uh, he's trying to hit on me. But a part of the story that he left out is that at Newman Formal my sophomore year, he actually invited himself to Kite and Key. Um, and boy, did he feel alive that night. Um, but as we became better friends, I found out that he actually liked me, and so I shut that down quickly. <laughs> but that only led us to being better friends. Um, <laughs> uh, so this past fall, me and Sarah actually had the opportunity to celebrate our one-year friend zone anniversary. Um, right up here. Um, and yeah, if you guys don't know what a friend's anniversary is, I think we might have actually invented it. Um, but so what it is, it's actually this really awesome way to just get you and the person who friends on you together along with all of your friends. I mean, you basically throw this huge celebration, celebrating the fact that if you guys would have tried to make it work out, um, it would have failed horribly, horribly, horribly. So you guys might be wondering, why are we talking about relations relationships? But it's because we're made for relationships. We're made for companionship and community. So the first point that we want to bring up is that friendships are foundational. And they are a foundation for all other forms of relationships and love, both theoretically and practically. So we need to know what it means to be a good friend and how to be a good friend. So think of a time that you were treated poorly, how it made you feel, and have you ever promised to yourself to never treat someone like that again? So part of my, like, growing up experience um, and in a friendship context. So I moved to Missouri um, in the sixth grade and uh, had to come to a new school, try to fit in in middle school, um, which isn't always a good time. Um, anyway, so I didn't exactly like fit in right away. Um, I was a little pudgier, really socially awkward. Um, a lot of things going on there, um, which actually caused me to like, uh, get bullied a lot in middle school, um, both physically and emotionally, um, by both guys and girls that um, I went to school with. Um, and so that was like really hard on me. Um, it was really hard for me to like form any sort of meaningful friendships and relationships. And then in high school, I kind of like went 180 on that. Um, kind of like grew into myself, uh, like got some social skills, um, and then genuinely, honestly, just started being like a pretty mean guy to a lot of different people because I viewed it as kind of my turn to get back um, at some of the people who had made me feel so miserably in middle school. Um, and really, that just um, was very toxic and detrimental now to like me trying to make real friends in college. Um, being a real friend, like what that meant um, and how to do it was something I had no clue how to do probably until about the past two years. Um, and Sarah was one of the first real friends that I've ever had. So um, that's kind of my friendship experience up to this point. 
So my story is a little different than Caius's. I remember in grade school, we were playing outside for recess and there was a group of people playing Foursquare. And I walked up to the group and one of the guys turned to me and was like, if you are just gonna stand there, you might as well just walk away. So I didn't know what to do, so I just walked away. And I remember how badly that hurt me and I made a promise to myself to never treat anyone like that again. So I made a point to be inclusive with everyone that I encounter but then I also wanted to be the person who wouldn't hurt someone where they would remember it 10 years later. So unlike the kid from recess, Christ is never telling us to just stand, or Christ is never telling us to leave him whenever we're just standing in our faith. He's always inviting us in. And we recognize that some of you guys might not really connect with either of our friendship stories up to this point. Um, so we think it's always important to incorporate scripture, uh, look at holy people in the Bible, um, and look about how they um, lived out their friendship. Um, so we're going to be talking about these two dudes named Elisha and Elijah, um, just so everybody is clear. Um, and so we're going to focus on one really important aspect of their friendship or equality. Um, it's about the intentional choosing of friends. So we have to be very purposeful with the people we decide to put into our life. Um, and Elijah rec- Elisha recognizes this in Elijah um, when he says in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 2, As the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will not leave you. So Elijah is completely devoted to his friend. Um, he recognizes that his friend um, is building him up, um, calling him on to more, um, making him more holy, and um, so he latches on and he won't let go. Um, so it's very important to find those people in your life that you can att- intentionally latch on to um, that are going to call you on to something more. Um, and the best example I can think of um, in my own life is uh, my roommate, John Foey. Um, he's usually in the band, um, but he's actually on a mission trip in Brownsville, Texas right now, down by the border, um, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, me and John, genuinely, like in any other context in the Christian faith, probably wouldn't even be like surface level friends, like probably wouldn't really talk to each other, um, solely because me and John are just incredibly, incredibly different people. Uh, we have completely different personalities. We're interested in totally different things. Um, we basically like none of the same music, um, and we don't really have any of the same hobbies. But we both recognize really great qualities in each other, um, and we both see how those can help us pursue the Christian faith together. Um, so although we, we're not very similar, um, we still take that time to talk with each other about what's going on in our lives, um, how God's working in things, uh, what we're struggling with, what our joys are. Um, all so we can intentionally build each other up um, and push each other closer to heaven. So studies show that we're most like the five people we are surrounded by the most. So for me, that's having six other roommates that I live with, and they've been supportive, honest, empathetic, motivating, and fun. Um, these, (laughs) These are just a few of the qualities that I've picked up from them. And all of these girls got me a gift for Valentine's Day. And even though that seems silly and small, it's the little things that go a long way. Um, They've stayed up and talked with me a countless number of times. They've called me out whenever I was being rude or did something stupid. They've expressed how grateful they are for me constantly. And the thing that I appreciate about them the most is that they've accepted me for who I am and got to take the time to know me. So someone might ask, how do you get friends like my roommates or John or Caius? And I think it's saying yes to random Andy's runs, saying yes to rooming with six other girls, or saying yes to a self-invitation to Kite and Key. (laughs) But um, although our roommates have exemplified what it means to have a holy relationship, it's silly not to talk about one of the greatest friendships of all, and that's our friendship with Jesus Christ. So John 15, 13 says, there is no greater love than this, to lay one's life down for one's friend. So yeah, guys, our friendship with Jesus Christ, our personal relationship with him, is the foundation of your entire life, right? Um, Without that, without that goodness flowing from him, um, things will fall short. Things won't be as good as they could be. Um, And it's also important to recognize that he really is the purest example of friendship that we have. Um, He took his life, um, his incredibly holy, perfect life, um, and laid it down at the cross very willingly, um, died for you individually, Um, really, one, to obviously save you from your sins, but also to prove your own worth to you in the eyes of your own father. Um, And while we as friends with each other, uh, we're not necessarily called to take a bullet for anyone that we call a close friend. 
Uh, but we are called to die in very small ways to ourselves and to sacrifice for that exact same reason so we can reveal our friend's worth um, in the eyes of Christ um, to them. Um, and some of the really, really small ways that I've found um, that help a lot to do this tangibly in my own life, um, I think we've all had that experience where uh, we're going to like hang out with friends, um, maybe we haven't seen people in a while, you're going to go to Addison's, Fuzzies, and you're going to like sit down and hang out. Um, and a really cool thing you can do is um, take the worst seat like at the table, um, let your friend, who maybe hasn't seen another friend, sit by that friend, um, and let them have that connection, even if you want to catch up with them too, um, allowing someone else to do that that you know also really wants to do that is a very small way. They might not even realize it, but it's a really good way um, that you can love a friend in your life. Uh, they're really small ways too. It's still a little chilly out. We're waiting for the weather to warm up. I'm hoping it'll be soon. Maybe post-spring break we'll be back up in the 60s and 70s. But for right now, another little thing you can do, uh, maybe even tonight, um, if somebody's walking home with like not a jacket on or like has short sleeves because it was warmer out earlier today, uh, feel free to offer up your coat or even just ask them um, if they're cold and they need anything. Um, and then the last really cool way, which this is probably my favorite, is we all literally, like every one of us does this. We, we start off our week, we come in on Monday, we talk to our friends, we're like, oh, what's up with you? And it's like, oh, I'm swamped, I'm busy. I got three tests, seven meetings, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's just so much stuff. And sometimes you hear that and then in your own head you're like, oh, like that sucks, I'm not that busy. Um, but what you can actually do instead, <laughs> what you can actually do instead um, is think about the fact that you have some free time this week that you could be enjoying for yourself, uh, but you could also use some of that free time to serve another friend in a very small way. Um, so say somebody's got some tests stacked up, they don't know where their next meal is going to come because they don't know when they're going to be able to get home from the library or something like that. Uh, cook them a little food, make a chipotle run for them, uh, just find something you can do, whether that's doing like a quick household chore for them, like run a load of laundry, uh, do the dishes, um, and just love them in that small way. And I promise you, like, they're going to recognize that love. They're going to feel more worthy. Um, and it's going to build your friendship even closer. So for mine and Caius' friendship, I think it really grew when Homeboy thought it would be a good idea to run for MSA vice president. Um, <laughs> so from a friend's perspective, I wanted to support him and see the good that he would do for the community. But little did we know, little Lebanon decided to post some dumb tweets in high school, and they got resurfaced, so MSA was a no-go. Um, so as a friend, I was honest. I called him out for being stupid, but you love and you learn, and there wasn't anything I could do but be empathetic and support him through the whole situation. Yeah, so Sarah sticking her neck out for me like that um, was something that I really, really appreciated. It's probably one of the most like paramount moments in our entire friendship together. Um, Legitimately, like my direct messages were like very full, and like fa like Facebook like comment threads were just full of like absolutely terrible things being said about like me, um, my family, and I think like the hardest thing was like people like saying like oh like your parents like raised a racist and like these really like very hurtful things that I had to like emotionally process, um, and it was definitely like the low point of my like entire time at Mizzou, um, mental health wise. Um, but Sarah taking that public stand for me um, was huge for me, and it also. Um, was even more important that I knew I could count on her. I remember one time uh, during that like month period where I was just down, um, that I just remember like sitting in the Walmart parking lot um, in her Nissan Rogue and just like crying and complaining about life. And like um, she was just there for me in so many ways, um, and she's really never failed to show up for me uh, in big ways or in small ways whenever I need her. Um, but now that we've talked a lot about foundational friendships, uh, we also recognize. Um, that a lot of us have that desire um, for these intimate relationships that we know that we were built for. Um, so we're going to move on to this next portion of our talk. We're going to be talking about uh, tangible ways that we can build uh, really ho uh, solid and healthy romantic relationships. So the first point that we want to make is that relationships are intentional. And in Genesis chapter 2, <coughs> verses 21 through 23, it says, So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of the ribs, and closed it up with flesh. The Lord God then built up a, into a woman the rib and then had taken it from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, this one at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and one shall be called woman. For out of her man, this one has been taken. And in the catechism, it states that 
Man and woman were made for each other. Not that God left them half made and incomplete. He created them to be a communion of persons in which he can be a helpmate to the other. For they are equal as in persons and complementary as masculine and feminine. So this means that no one is better or worse than the other. That's the significance of the rib. It's not above the body or it's not below the body and that they're equal. So having that complementary person is a great aspect of life but how do we find that helpmate? So Caius is gonna talk about how to pursue girls, but ladies, listen up, because this is how you should be, this is what you should look for to be pursued. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if you guys, you, I would venture to say most of you guys probably haven't heard this in a relationships uh, portion of a talk before, uh, but the best thing I could come up with, honestly, was just like, be really courageous and just go on bad first dates, like just terrible first dates. Um, because in reality, we like, that helps us realize that first dates aren't a big deal. Um, asking someone out on a date is literally just communicating to someone that you see the value in them, um, that you're interested in learning more about them, and that you would just like to spend a little bit of time getting to know them better. Um, it's nothing more than that. It's not like a, hey, like, let's get married next week or anything crazy. Um, it's literally just the opportunity to sit down with someone um, and hear them out and hear a little bit about their life. Um, and so, yeah, to even prove to you that uh, first dates aren't a big deal, I have a couple examples uh, from my junior year of college that um, they didn't even turn into dates, but it was just like, it really showed me that it wasn't a huge deal because those friendships have been something that have been like so solid since I was rejected. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, like I asked this girl out uh, at the beginning of junior year and um, it took her a little while to get back to me, but she literally, <laughs> she literally said, uh, I'm just becoming a nun, so probably not. And I was like, that's fair, that's fair. Um, and then another girl that I asked out junior year, I asked her out probably four to six hours uh, before her current boyfriend of two, or after her current boyfriend of two years asked her out. So I missed that window by just a little bit. It was probably the most awkward thing I've ever done in my entire life. I'm very happy that they're still together, um, and we're still very close. So um, Believe me, you can do it, and it can work, um, and you can, you can do this awkward first date thing uh, a million times over, and the reason why it's so good um, is because we have to understand that it's important for us to recognize who we should be pursuing, but it's equally, if not more important, for us to realize how to pursue that person. Um, because you could find like your soulmate, you could click like right away, um, you could have very like complimentary personalities, like it could all just be going so well, but if you don't know how to actually pursue that person um, and how to pour into that relationship, um, it's going to fall short. Like literally, if you're like on date number three or four, but you can't even like show up on time, um, odds are it's probably not going to work out um, because you have to be doing the little things right um, and being very intentional in your pursuit of another person. Um, but what are some really like small tangible ways for us to kind of start this dating process? Um, first off, if you're going to ask someone out on a date, Literally use any form of communication. I literally do not care, but do not text them and do not hit their DMs up, <laughs> y'all. I'm talking, get a phone call going, FaceTime them if you want to. Uh, but realistically, the best way to do this is in person. Um, it can be really awkward, like I said, um, but using eye contact and body language actually really helps eliminate those kind of blurred and gray lines that can happen when you ask someone out on a date. Um, and just being able to connect with that person really like reaffirms um, what you're trying to do, which is just sit down and get to know them a little bit better. Um, and always use the word date, fellas, please. Girls really, really like it when you call it a date, um, even if they don't want to go on one with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> the next really tangible thing that you can do, um, is don't assume that like there's like a progression of dating of like oh like first date we got to do coffee or lunch like this is that's just like how you do it second date you know maybe third date we'll get dinner I don't know um, it's really important to communicate with that person every time what they would feel comfortable doing with you um, because some people um, when you start spending money on them or this or that um, it can make them really uncomfortable and uncertain about the relationship so it's just always a good idea um, to communicate to them what they would be comfortable doing some people just want to walk around campus or sit down in a really chill place like the student center um, and just talk for an hour. And then if it goes really well, um, you can obviously take it from there. Um, and then the last and most important thing, I think, uh, when it comes to beginning the dating process, 
um, is you need to be practicing with every person that you encounter how to actively listen. Um, so there's a big difference between listening to reply to someone um, and listening to truly understand someone. Um, and this is paramount in relationships because the whole goal of uh, this dating process is to get to know someone better and see if you're compatible. Um, so if you're going to get to know somebody's heart, somebody's life, um, and where they think it's going, um, it's just incredibly, incredibly important that you actually know how to take that, take what they're sharing with you in, um, hold that in your heart, understand them. It doesn't have to be all about having something quick and cool to say back. Um, you really have to be able to grow to understand that person. Um, and then, yeah, so if we can do this dating process really well, we might actually end up in a relationship, which is pretty cool. Um, so what's the, what's the number one thing, I think? Um, it's something I've been praying through a lot recently, um, and it's just a really, really awesome quote um, from Jonathan Reyes, um, who's the founder of Christ in the City, uh, which is a really, really cool homeless ministry um, that he founded. And essentially, literally, they don't try to like, get people off the streets like, they don't try to like financially support anyone or anything like that. They're literally their entire mission is to just go out into the streets um, and meet up with homeless people um, and just reaffirm their existence, talk to them, build relationships, literally like become best friends with these people um, who have just been so marginalized and passed by in life. I mean, it's such a beautiful thing. So this man really does know a lot about um, love and relationships. Um, and he says, boys are dictated by their feelings, whereas men rejoice in the truth. If she knows your heart, cares for you, and helps you choose joy every day, you have to commit. You can't just rely on your feelings and emotional upswings to be the foundation or sustaining quality of your relationship. Um, and this is something I've actually learned a lot about personally recently, um, this year, uh, senior year. So I've been in an on and off dating relationship since October um, with a girl who I really, really like. Um, and really, essentially, our story uh, comes down to this very, very quote. Um, because we'd been dating, um, I liked her really a lot, like straight from the start. Um, we'd been friends for a long time, and um, so everything was going super, super well. Uh, but then I started to rely on just my feelings to uh, sustain that relationship. And it got to a point, kind of, um, uh, a couple of months ago where um, there was a lot of question marks about where we were both going to be the next year and other things, and I relied on this idea, or I relied on like this anxiety and this fear um, that I had, um, and I got this like feeling of cold feet, and I just jumped ship completely, um, and I learned like you can't rely on your feelings um, uh, to get you through and to sustain something uh, that means a lot to you. Um, and so recently, uh, that relationship has been rekindled. Um, which makes me incredibly, incredibly, incredibly happy. Um, and I think it really came down to the fact, um, the fact that I did this thing. I recognized and rejoiced in the truth of who she was as a person um, and allowed that to start building up and sustaining our relationship. Um, so recognizing the fact um, that she's been one of my best friends for the past two years and um, she's just supported me in so many ways and she's the most selfless person that I know. Um, and I'm just really, really thankful for her um, and that she's in my life. So you can talk before I start <laughs> crying. <laughs> so from that so same Jonathan Ray's talk, um, he stated, boys avoid commitment, but men treasure commitment. And that commitment is not a burden, but it's the greatest gift that we can give. So when we are committed to someone, we reaffirm the message that Christ gave to us on the cross. We are worth being sacrificed for, and commitment is the choice to sacrifice ourselves and for the betterment of ourselves and our significant other. But just a reminder, whenever you commit to someone or commit to a date, it's not committing to marriage, but it's just getting to know them. And I'm guilty of not giving people chances. Sorry, bud. <laughs> um, but through my past 22 years of singleness, I have grown and matured as an individual. I found the hobbies and interests that I like, but I also found the characteristics that I found attractive. And you have to find the worth in yourself before you can add someone else into your life. And I refused to settle, but came to the re realization that nobody's perfect, so I found the person whose characteristics I really admire. And I was honest with Caius, and I didn't lead him on, and I, told, I shut that down quickly, but he was accepting of it. Um, so when someone pursues you, find the values that align with yours. And if you have the same core values, then that will help a relationship tremendously. So if God's your number one priority, find someone who will be your number two. And 
You want to find someone who will run with Christ to you and not get in your way. And so a really good scripture quote um, to kind of just sum up a lot of what Sarah said um, is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. And it says, Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. And it collapsed and was completely ruined. Um, so if we have Jesus Christ in our life and we have a relationship with him, that literally is the foundation in the house that, um, the foundation in the rock that our house will be built upon, that our life will be built upon. Um, and having that foundation will allow you to really work through things in any relationship that you find yourself in. And while those things may seem a little bit smaller now, um, while we're younger and in college, things like figuring out where you want to go together uh, for spring break or what you want to do uh, this weekend or where you want to go to eat, um, eventually those conversations and those differences that you have to work through um, are very major things. Differences in opinion about how you want to raise a child, um, different um, communication issues that will come up um, in your marriage, um, possible location changes because of a job opportunity, um, and also figuring out how to balance time, spending time with both of your families whenever the holidays roll around, um, things that you're really going to have to have uh, figured out, um, but the only way you can figure that out is through the lens of having this foundation in Jesus Christ. Um, and while it's really important for us to uh, foster these awesome, beautiful friendships together and also these really cool uh, intimate and romantic relationships, um, at the end of the day, we are all Christians. Um, we literally exist to profess Jesus Christ in our own lives. Um, and as a church, um, we exist because we are built to live in community with one another. So the third part that we want to bring up is that community is sustaining. So being a part of a moral community provides a person with a feeling that one's life is significant. So as an individual, we may feel unimportant, but a moral community will make us feel important. So alone we may not feel special, but if we have a community of unique individuals, it will bring a significance into our life. So a moral community also offers moral guidance. So it's a community that tells us what's right from what's wrong and what kind of life we should be living and guidance on how to live that kind of life. In Hebrews uh, chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, uh, we really hear what that community looks like. And says, we must consider how to rouse one another to love and good works. We should not stray away from our assembly, as is the custom of some, but encourage one another. And this all the more, as you see the day drawing near. Um, so our community here literally exists um, to build each other up and to prepare each other um, for something so much bigger than ourselves. I mean, that's to walk into the kingdom of God um, with eyes wide open to meet the love of Jesus Christ in person. Um, and so we wanted to talk to you guys about some of the characteristics that we, are, we think are really important for a community to embody. Um, and that first one is that community has to be fun, y'all. Um, while community is necessary, um, holy communities, um, they will fail and they will flaw um, whenever you do not want them. Um, and so people desire things that are going to be enjoyable, fun, and adventurous. Um, like some of these pictures you see up here. Um, just going on picnics, 54 country, uh, literally getting <laughs> your entire Bible study to wear a ton of jean stuff um, and get it put in the church directory. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we have to have this fun aspect in our lives um, because it's one of the most like human things about us is the desire to be joyful and to have fun. And it helps break down this idea that a lot of us have um, that when we surround ourselves in a holy community, um, and it's that we're all not struggling and that we're not all... <laughs> Uh, going through something and having this fun um, allows us to realize just how human everyone is and it can open up awesome ways for people to be vulnerable with one each other. Um, it humanizes us. It really allows us to see each other as nothing more um, than the broken humans that we are um, and we all need each other to build each other up. So the second point of community that we want to bring up is that community is encouraging. So I hate public speaking but Kai's convinced me to give this talk. Um, he believed in something that I could do when I didn't believe in myself. 
And the importance of community gives you the opportunity to be around a diverse group of people. People who are all, at all different stages of their life. So you could learn from someone or you could teach them something. It's someone who will push you out of your comfort zone and you can push them out of their own comfort zones. Um, we need to be a community that lifts each other up and being the friend that each person needs at that specific time of their life. God has, made so many, God has put so many people in our lives and we should take the time to get to know each individual. But I have learned so many educational facts as well as gotten to know so many different personalities. And after meeting amazing people, why not share the people that you enjoy with the other people that you enjoy hanging out with? And how else do you think Caius would become a theta rat? <laughs> Um, <laughs> the last aspect that we wanted to talk about, and I think probably the most important, is that we have to recognize um, that building these communities up, um, it takes time. So Rome wasn't built in a day, guys, um, and neither will a dynamic, loving, life-giving, life-changing community. Um, it's going to take time and effort. Um, you're going to have to do things that aren't convenient. Um, when you want to meet up with somebody in your Bible study to talk one-on-one, -on -one, or there's a friend you haven't seen in a long time, um, the odds are it's because your schedules don't line up, and what you need to do um, is get coffee with them at 7 a.m. Um, if that's what you need to do to see somebody, that's what you need to do. Um, or if you have to eat dinner at 4, even though you know you're going to be hungry three hours later, but that's the only way you're going to be able to share time with that person, um, that's a sacrifice that you need to be willing to make to help build up this faith community. Um, and um, some things that you're going to do aren't going to work, um, and that's something that you also have to recognize is that patience and humility. Um, so maybe you plan something, um, you plan some sort of event, um, like a Bible study or um, some sort of social, and everyone thinks it's super lame, hardly anyone shows up, nobody really connected. Um, or let's say you um, give a talk on something, um, and it's not really speaking to anyone's hearts. Um, you have to be willing uh, to go back to the drawing board, um, to persist, to keep trying. Um, so really what it comes down to in this time is that Within this time, you have to be persistent, patient. Um, you have to be steadfast, dedicated. Um, and you also have to incorporate the Lord um, into the center of all these things. Um, because I can genuinely tell you, um, I've been leading a Bible study for the last like two and a half years. Um, and I don't even think the studies are that good most of the time, I'm not going to lie. Um, as far as the scripture that we go through sometimes, um, I appreciate you, bro. Um, but genuinely, it's the fact that I pray to the Lord very often to say, like, God, give me the guys that are supposed to be here. Um, work through me, work through them, connect us, um, and allow us to just grow in friendship. Um, and when you ask God to show up, he will show up. Um, but you have to give him time and just keep working. Y'all, as much as it pains me to say this, um, it's probably time for us to wrap this bad boy up. Um, <laughs> So we just want to leave you with a little bit of uh, some closing thoughts. Um, but if there's one common thread, I think, that me and Sarah have found in our own friendship over the past several years, um, it's that it's really all about action. So Sarah and I don't just talk or think up things that we want to do. Um, we actually go out and do them. Um, we didn't think our way to the lake two summers ago. Um, we didn't think our way to Knoxville over uh, Thanksgiving break to have probably the best away game experience you could ever have in college. Um, and we really find that talk is cheap, um, and that actions are what communicate to someone um, what they truly mean to you. Um, so if you're gonna build any friendship, relationship, or community, um, you can't just think about it, you really do have to be about it, and you have to take tangible steps um, every single day to actively pursue what you desire. So if you wanna start taking action now, a few things that you could do is join a Bible study or go on a retreat, Awakening 37, April 12th through 14th, talk to me after if you're interested. And there's also Theology on Tap tomorrow at the Heidelberg with free apps. Um, and if you don't want to commit to any of these, Caius and I are going to Addison's after this, and their happy hour is 6.50 nachos or 2.50 pints. Um, and yeah, I guess just to like finish this off strong, y'all, um, and to really just model friendship, um, I'm actually going to invite Alex Bodecker to come up here. Um, I wanted to give Sarah some flowers tonight. Um, just to thank her so much. Uh, Um, I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. One, for just getting up here to speak with me. I know this isn't always your vibe. 
Um, but also just thank you so much for being the best friend I could have asked for during the last couple years at Mizzou, um, for supporting me through everything, and just leaving me incredibly confident uh, that when I walk away from this place, I'll have a lifelong friend. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming, coming everybody. <laughs>